All right, calling to order a meeting of the Clark County Ethics Review Commission. Uh, we'll start with a roll call. Can the commissioners present please state their full names? Darcy Rourke. Barbara Baskerville. All right, and I'm Adam Murray. Uh, do we have any members of the public who would like to comment today? We do not know, and I also did not receive any written comments for your meeting. Okay. All right. Um, so then I guess the first thing is to approve the minutes from the last meeting. Did everyone get a chance to review them? Yeah, I did. So I moved to approve. Okay. A second. Okay, we uh, and and I vote to approve the minutes also. All right. So the next thing then the uh, what we have been calling the bylaws, but are actually titled administrative procedures is the next item in the agenda. Um, I took a stab at trying to harmonize them with the business process that we've been discussing. Did um, you guys get a chance to look at those? Yes. All yes, right. I did. <laughs> Excuse me, you have to forgive me. I um, just got back from vacation and I managed to contract COVID during my travels. Oh so, no. So I'm recovering for now, but um, so I'll probably be coughing and stuff through the meeting. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, thank you. Um, all right, so how do you guys want to proceed with this? Do we want to go through with the red lines? Um, or do you guys or do we want to just go through like where you guys have suggested changes? What's the easiest? I don't have any suggested changes beyond what you have there um, myself. Okay, I do not either. Um, yeah, if you want to just point out the key changes that you made. Sure. Um, okay, so kind of going through then I'm just sort of looking through the red line um, in the 1st section. The changes were mostly uh, sort of administrative, just kind of putting in. The list of the different places where we find the ethics rules that will be. Um, ruling on and then um, and I think that's mostly covers all of the changes in section one. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, going down to section 1.7. Um, we had some suggestions from Chris about how to handle the records, so I made some changes. And I think Chris had a change in here also. Um, just about how our records make it onto the website and, and are handled at the county level. Uh, in section 2. Enforcement procedures. Um, I just brought in the reference to the business process. That we've settled on for now, um, we might need to change that. Once it goes through the bargaining uh, process, but um, so far, so good. The bulk of the changes were in section 3 on the conduct of the hearing. Um, and I think that's just a reflection of. Um, all the work that we did on the business process, so. The idea was to make this. Um, basically mirror what uh, what's in that other document. Uh, and I also think that, that in some ways the red here looks maybe like more changes than it actually was because we kind of moved some things around. Right. Chris had a couple comments uh, in the draft version that I tried to address. Um, I think the the main one was that we talked about um, compelling people to produce you know, documents or evidence, and we changed that to request uh, since we don't really have any power to compel anything. Right. Um, moving down into uh, what's page four in the red line. Uh, this also just reflects the process that we talked about. Um, 
who can provide testimony, call witnesses, um, the opportunity for both sides of a complaint to cross-examine other witnesses. We have an opportunity as the commissioners to question um, the complainant and the respondent. Mm, let's see, section 3.2, I guess, presiding officials. These are, let's see. This is a procedural talking about how the process will be handled during hearings. Uh, we have our um, recusal provision in there, which we've acknowledged in prior meetings that um, as a commission of three, we might end up running into some problems depending on how many people are recused or otherwise on how many commissioners are recused or otherwise unable to participate. And uh, there's not a whole lot we can do about those, but I tried to um, address this in section two of section 3.2. So 3.2.2. Um, and what I came up with is, I mean, it's, I don't know if it's possible. So maybe Chris wants to give us her thoughts, but, but the idea that I put in the document was that if two or three commissioners are recused, so then we wouldn't have a quorum um, in order to make any decisions, the consideration of the com that complaint would be stayed and we'd ask the county executive to appoint uh, commissioners pro tem to bring us up to a quorum. Uh, okay, shall I jump in? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so, a couple things. First of all, Clark County does not have a county executive. King County has a county executive. We have a county manager. So, every place here where it says county executive, executive should be stricken and manager should be inserted. That's in the very first paragraph of the document as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't think think I'm sorry that this provides a solution. I've um, looked hither and yon for <laughs> law in Washington on this subject, and there's very little of it that I could find anyway. Anybody else who can find some or wants to try is more than welcome to, but I'm not finding it. And I will tell you what specifically I was looking for. Uh, some state courts, some states courts, for example, Oregon's, recognize in administrative proceedings something called the rule of necessity. And what that is, is a rule that says, when you cannot possibly get a quorum because too many people are disqualified, uh, then someone who is disqualified is, uh, they can rule anyway. Mm. Um, so mm. if, if two of you were disqualified, you would be, <laughs> undisqualified pretty much. So as I say, I have uh, seen that recognized in Oregon, not in this state. So I don't think there's a rule of necessity here. Um, so that's that would be the easy fix. Darn. Um, I don't think Adam, with respect that what you drafted works. It's just too far away from what's authorized either by the code, which we know is not correct in its entirety, um, 
or by the charter. There's there's just no provision anywhere for appointing alternates pro tem. And in addition, uh, even if there were, that would take a long time. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought when I when I wrote it up was that it probably wasn't going to really pass the sniff test here, but tried to come up with something because the only yeah. other thing that I can think of is to just leave it as an unresolved issue and hope it doesn't happen and then confront it when and if it does. Um, yeah, I, I that at this point, that is my advice okay. on how to proceed here. Um, hopefully it would be, a an astonishingly rare kind of thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Well then, um, I, I, I don't, I guess we don't necessarily need a motion for this, but I would, I would say I, I'm inclined to go with what Chris says and to just strike that second paragraph of, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot already. Is it 3.2 or 3.3? Yeah, the number is a little weird here. Yeah, it might have gotten out of whack on the. I think it's 3.2 point. I either two or three. There's <laughs> too much redlining here, and I think one of the numbers got stricken that shouldn't have been. Yeah, I think so. The one that's highlighted there on, uh, I guess that's Kristen's computer. That's the one. I think if we just take that out, then what we're left with is um, that, you know, we can recuse um, based on our own volition or uh, if someone. Let me take a quick look here. Or, or on someone's request. And then um, we'll just hope that it doesn't uh, doesn't take happen. Too many of us. <laughs> you're right, right. Um, and then I do notice too, Kristen, if you're making these changes as we go, so the next sections then there's a the numbers need to be changed because uh, that was three point two, so the next one should be three point three, and then three point six, and Okay, I see that. I'm making notes, but I might actually just open up the Word version. That. Do you see on page four, be the better. chair shall preside over all hearings? That should be, the number one has been stricken there. I think that should actually be number one. And then on page five, where it says number one, it should be number two. And okay, my computer's lagging a little, but that's okay. And I can go back through and change numbers later. Yeah. That's easy. Okay. And then, sorry, Chris, <clears throat> what was the next? Edit I was note? saying it, this is all number changing. Okay, perfect. I can do that's easy. I can do that. And I guess should, we should go ahead and change um, executive to manager also. Yes, I made a note of that too. I yeah. can um, go through it and change it everywhere it says that. Okay. Um, Thank you. Barbara and Darcy. You all right with that approach for that section? Right. I yeah. am. Yeah, okay. Alrighty then. Um, moving on down, um, rights of the parties. There's some red in there. Um, and this is really just um, kind of simplifying it again to reflect the business process. Right. In the next section on ex parte communications, nothing, um, nothing very 
important in there, just changing. Um, well, actually, no, this does remind me. Um, I think on this, I was still using member, and didn't we decide last time to use commissioners instead of we members? Did. We did talk about that. So, Chris, can you make, uh, Kristen, sorry, can you make a note to change yes. that? Yes. Yes, I will. I'll keep an eye out for that throughout the whole thing, too. Okay. So, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, so, after the hearing, the uh, chair, the commission can request briefs, right? Which have to be filed within five days. But then we go down to 3.8 commission ruling within 30 days after the conclusion of a hearing, not after 30 days after the filing of a brief, um, commission shall based upon the evidence make and fully record Etc. cetera, a written ruling. So the commission will have to meet in order to do that. Does this give time for a meeting? Mm. A um, publicly noticed public meeting. Yeah. How, how much notice are we supposed to give? I don't remember. <laughs> Normally for special meetings, at least with the council, it's 24 hours notice. If there's a public hearing, I mean, that's dictated by ordinance or by RCW. And Chris, I don't think this would be considered that. Mm -hmm. um, well, if nobody else gets to speak besides the commission, no, I don't think so. Yeah, so I think it's 24 hours notice is the minimum for any public meetings. Or a special public meeting. Okay. Well, would it make sense to include in uh, the thirty day thing? And is is this saying that that meeting needs to happen within thirty days? Well, the decision has to happen within thirty days, and the decision has to be the product of a of a meeting. So. The decision, the meeting has to happen long enough before the 30 days that somebody, uh, yes. <clears throat> what I sort of imagined with this before was that the hearing isn't really concluded until after, like, if we were decide to request briefs. The hearing is continued and not concluded. Well, then we need to say so, I think. I mean, that can work. Okay. Absolutely. But it just needs to say so. Well, can we put before those 30 days that at the conclusion of the hearing and any briefs allowed? then 30 days starts to run. Uh, okay, up here, number three, it says, at the close of a hearing, the commission may request final briefs. Okay. All right, so then 3.8. This is 3 point, uh, I don't even know what it's gonna be once the numbers are changed. This is right now it's called 3.5.3 at the close of a hearing. Mm -hmm. So that one I think is fine. Well, we could say after the request final summary briefs, comma, in which case the You know what I think is the problem? I think the problem is the at the close of a hearing, not the rest of it. 
So just remove that. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, because the um, this is looking a little odd now. Which number are, are you including that in? This is this is in what's now called 3.5 rights of the parties. Number it's three on on page six and it yeah, number three. Kristen, can you scroll down a little bit so we can see that? What if it said as a part of the hearing? The commission may allow or request final briefs. Um, because didn't we just say that that would really still be a continuation of the hearing? Well, I just, um, yeah. What does the business process say about the order of the hearing? I'm not sure the business process addressed briefs, but it might. I don't think it did either. Do we really do we do you really want briefs to be filed after the hearing? Or should they be before the hearing or. Uh, makes more sense to me is after makes more sense to me. Just like a closing argument. Well, they get the opportunity for closing argument. I know that uh, I file my briefs at the court of appeals before they hear oral argument. Yeah, I kind of imagine this more along the lines of like, um, you know, after there's a, a hearing or some other kind of oral argument when the judges want a supplemental briefing on something that's just not made clear by the process before that. Um, so you can do that. It's just going to complicate the rest of the proceedings a little bit because you're still going to have to have a hearing uh, or a continuation of the hearing to make a decision. Mm -hmm. So that hearing is not going to be over until after its second part where you do deliberations, which mm -hmm. have to happen in public. How about referring to the part where it says uh, the conclusion of the hearing that we, we may request briefs, how about if we make it at the conclusion of the initial hearing? And that defines it from a final hearing where you can include the 30 days for a decision. Just make sure that you put in it everything that is needed to explain the step. And, and it might, it might be a little more complex than just adding or taking away a phrase. And, and it could be instead of a new hearing, it could be a continued hearing. Mm -hmm. Right. I, it, probably that makes more sense, I think, because by that time, the public participation part of the hearing is done. Right.
So here's here's a thought. Uh, at the close, okay, so what if it was at the close of presentations? Oh, well, what if you allow for argument? And that's a presentation, but that's okay. This, do you want to th just talk about briefs here? Because as initially drafted, it says may allow for or arguments or. And what I'm seeing has four arguments crossed out, but not the word or. So I'm kind of wondering what you intended here. Do you want it where, to just where say? Where are you looking now? Line three or paragraph three on page six, 3.5, number three. At the close of a hearing, mm -hmm. the commission may allow, and then the next word is or. Or request final summary briefs. May allow what or request final summary briefs? May allow or request. Right, they, they may allow them to have an or. Uh, okay, so I would, we don't need to say allow there. If it's requested, it's obviously allowed. Why don't, it, it initially said allow for arguments or request briefs. Mm -hmm. Let's just say may request final briefs. Okay. Um, so, um, the fifth business, and then let's say as part of that sentence, comma, in which case the hearing will be continued to a date and time certain, no less than. This is a problem because this commits y'all to agreeing to some time in the future that you won't know. Um, so may allow, uh, in which case the, the hearing will be continued for a time period between 20 and 60 days. Does that work between 20 and 45 days? Something like that. So it's the same hearing, it's continued. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to specify when it's continued. And by the way, that if it's specified, then you don't have to publish notice again. No. It's specified at the hearing? Right, when you continue a hearing, if it's continued to a date and time certain, you do not need to uh, notice the continued hearing. Okay. Well, I'm fine with the 20 or 45, 20 to 45 days. Um, how about just no, not longer than 45 days? Oh yeah, that works for me. That works great. Okay. Kristen, you got that? <laughs> I think so. <clears throat> if you Chris. if you want to if you want to like show it to me before it goes out, please do so. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And You're I think welcome. at the very beginning of this number 3 right here, were were you still deleting at the close of the hearing? I know that was so Adam suggested after presentation, um, after final argument, does that work? Is that what they're giving according to the business process? According to the business process, each one gets a chance to speak at the end. 
well, no, and then and then you all get to ask questions and so forth. I like at the uh, I, I'm coming back to liking at the close of a year. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, yeah, I'm I'm fine leaving it with at the close of the hearing, um, although. Yeah, that's not right. It's just that's not going to work. Is it? With what and, we, uh, the we just did. Why don't Why don't we just dump that initial phrase? Yeah, that sounds good to me. I don't think it's necessary. Do those changes then, Chris, do those fix the problems in, okay, I guess, let's in the ruling section? Scroll down within 30, ah. Uh, no. <laughs> um, so it, within 45 calendar days, okay. Yeah, that's this is a this is a it's either at the close of a hearing that hasn't been I'm not I'm not suggesting this is verbiage. This is just the concept. So y'all are going to make the decision right there on the spot at the hearing if it hasn't been continued or at the well, at at the continued hearing. One or the other. So um the way it's written now that it's saying within 30 days after the conclusion of a hearing on the complaint. I don't think that works because um, you have to have another public meeting to do your deliberations and your vote. Okay, let me, can I pop back up to sort of the bigger picture here and see, so what, what I'm hoping for with this provision is a set time between when we say, okay, everything's done, presentations, consideration of briefs, all that stuff, everything is done. Um, I would like to have a, a set time that people can know, you know, we're gonna get this done in, you know, fairly quick order, uh, because I anticipate that some of these issues may be you know, time might be of the essence for some of these, and I don't think that what we're charged with is really uh, necessarily complicated enough that we want to sit on these things for months. Well, that's exactly why I'm suggesting that this doesn't work. Yeah. And the reason that it doesn't work is that um, I think what the business business process outlines is that the decision is made right there at the hearing that's not continued. Now you can go into executive session, and by the way, you can't deliberate an executive session, you can evaluate. So you can discuss and evaluate what you've seen in executive session. Then you come back out and you don't have to go in executive session if you don't want to, but then mm -hmm. you would come back out and do your deliberations publicly and vote right there. Okay. And I, th the, uh, another way that it happens is that um, if it's continued, then 
within 45 days, you have the continued hearing where that happens, except at the continued hearing, you also get to consider the briefs. Now, there's no rule that says that is the way it works. If you want to, after the hearing where you take testimony and argument, and then maybe there's briefing, if you want to come back and have another hearing to make your decision, go to town. Mm -hmm. We will have to write that in here. That's not what I was thinking of when yes. I was thinking of how this would work. And it's it's okay, but remember, it has to be noticed and you know, if this is the way it's going to work all the time, I mean, technically it's a, it's a special meeting, but you don't want to be given 24 hours notice when you're going to be making a decision on something like this. You want to, I think, a, a longer notice time. Um, and yeah, I, I agree with Chair Murray that, uh, it shouldn't, this shouldn't go on for months. It should be relatively quickly after the last testimony, argument, whatever is given to you. Okay, um, I guess I need to clarification here. Why can't we put in the hearing within, with only 30 calendar days after conclusion of the hearing and any continuances. Then you hold another hearing. Then it has to be another hearing. After the continuances? Does it have you to be a all, hearing or if you a all, well, a meeting, fine, a public meeting. It has to be public. It has to be noticed. It has to include all those formalities. So, if we decide to take or to request final briefs, then can we have the briefs due on the schedule that we have in there now? Within 45 days? Yeah, yes. and then, or, yeah, boy, that's a long time though, isn't it? Um, but it's okay for the commissioners to each individually have these briefs and be considering them and then to have a meeting where we discuss them? Absolutely. You just can't talk about them right. <laughs> with each other at right. all or email or text or anything. Yeah. There are three of you, so two of you are a quorum. And if you talk with one other commissioner about it, that's a great big uh, public meetings act violation. How about if we change the timeline for, uh, the briefs, the 45 days, the 30 days, and then this one in 3.8 to 45 days. So it'd be 15 days after the final continuance. You know, I don't care, but. Consider how practical that is in terms of your lives. You know, if somebody has a trip planned or a or a big brief and court hearing due in two weeks or something like that. It, it should be long enough that it works, but not too long to make it uh, oppressive to everybody who wants a decision. Yeah, so the, um. Why do the briefs need to be so such a long time, either 30 or 45 days? If I was, if I was one of the participants, I would pretty well know what it is I'm presenting or arguing. I shouldn't need another 40 days or 
even 30 days. I think days the way it is, so the, way, the, the way that, it, that it's written, the briefs are due within five days after we continue um, the, the right. hearing where people make presentations. Okay. So it's that the, part it's, short. It's, it's, yeah. So then the 45 days is we're supposed to have another meeting because I'm confused back and forth now. And I can that, 45 40 days. days it would be a continued hearing. And why don't we? That's why I'm wondering why we can't shorten that up because. Yeah, you can you can do whatever you want. You can have that within a week if you want. Because we're, we're really allowing 40 days be time, be time between the time that the brief is due for us to look at them. And get together again, and that seems like a bit of a stretch. Well, but. it has to be within 40 days. It doesn't doesn't have to be a minimum of 40 days. Right. right. But if this 30 day calendar days after conclusion is I mean, you're looking at 75 days if you actually stretch it to the longest time. I, or maybe the 45 days includes, even if we had it 3 days later, um, would include that. So I guess you're not, I guess that's compensating for any, any uh, vacations you have or illnesses or something you need to file. Well, um. Darcy, what do you think? We haven't heard from you for a while. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. I I, I don't know. It, it just seems it seems like we ought to be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish. So because the 45 days is just that's the that's the max, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and there are occasions I'm guessing that we might need that max, but for the most part, we're not going to, right? I would think so. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so too. Well, so. I I think we should go with what the timelines that are set out since we can adjust them backwards for right. the maximum. If that just it really turns out to be a problem, which I kind of doubt, then we can make changes. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, that works for me too. So in that case. What do we need to change there? That first sentence of the rulings? Uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, the, let me understand the set, say the continued hearing. We would at that point, perhaps go into executive session then come into an open meeting and make a decision. You would deliberate and make a decision. Okay. So at the fine that that is the conclusion of the of the hearing and any continuances. Okay. So then you uh make and fully record a written ruling. Um Who reduces the ruling to writing? <laughs> this is my next nasty question. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And what if somebody disagrees with how the ruling is written? Well, who typically would do that? The judge. I don't know that there is a typical in this. Yeah, in this case, I, you know, what I. You know, where, where my brain goes to with this was, um. 
when I worked for the appellate courts and there's a three judge panel and um, after considering all the evidence and all the briefs, then the people on the panel, in this case being commissioners, would sort of vote on um, how they thought it should be resolved and then assign someone. So one of the three the ruling, but. Yeah, the difference here is that you can't do any voting after a hearing. You can't do any voting except during a hearing. Okay. You know, the courts don't have open public meeting act responsibilities. Right. And they never will. Just saying. <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so all that goes on during a meeting. Right. So at a meeting, you could vote on it, make your decision and choose an author. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. And, and then, okay, let's just think this through. Somebody writes a draft, then what? Yeah, then we'd have to meet again, right? <laughs> Sorry. To consider the draft. Yeah, and then we get into timing issues again, because then we have to set up timing if a commissioner wants to request revisions to the draft. What's the time scale going to be for that? Hmm. My thought is it's probably generally not going to be a lengthy document. Right. Uh, therefore, if we could discuss, okay, we make a decision that participant one is right. And at that meeting, we discuss the reasons why he did A, B, and C and should E, F, and G should happen. Those could all be written down at the meeting and then someone, you would, the chair would appoint someone to put them and make sure the English is correct it, without um, editorial, because it should be fairly straightforward. And if it's not straightforward, we could discuss it at that time. Mm -hmm. So we're really asking for just a recorder uh, to write these things down and then put them in a form um, that would be a very quick uh, meeting time to have reviewed them. And if we leave out the editorials, it's much quicker. And maybe I'm not making myself clear, but no, I think I think you're you're being quite clear. Okay. Um, I I am astonished that the number of ways that people can argue about what's in the minutes or what should be in the minutes of a meeting. Um, but I I think it's it's certainly possible for what you suggested there to to work. Or at, I mean, even at that meeting, even at that, okay, we've, we've heard the evidence and the read the briefs and we've made a decision that A is our decision. At that point, then commissioner A can say, and I uh, find this to be true because of A, B, C, D. Commissioner two can say, I find this to be true for A, B, C. I'm not quite clear on D and E, but I can, but I concur with the majority. And commissioner C can say, I concur or elaborate. That can all be recorded at that time, and that's the decision. That would be great. And of course, it being a, a public meeting, it will literally be recorded. 
right, right. so the mm -hmm. author could go back to the recording right and said commissioner a said it's yep we rule in this because of ABCD. Commissioner B said this thing, and Commissioner C said this. That's forwarded to the whoever, both parties or all parties, and the recording has been made. But we have stated, well, I don't think we're going to sit and think about it another week. We've been already doing this for 45 days or longer. Right. Uh, I think we're going to know this was a violation or it wasn't a violation. Um, and can state our reasons there, which we should do in open meetings anyway. Anyway. Mm -hmm. That all sounds good to me. Okay. It works for me. So does someone want to take a stab at rewriting that paragraph? I'm not sure why, because it says that after that, um, or we don't just the 30, 30 days is uh, uh, only thing is that it has to be sent to them within 30 days, but at the hearing, uh, the decision will be made and the comments of each commissioner will be recorded. Any written ruling will be sent to the participants within 30 days of that hearing. And isn't that, is that what we're saying? Uh, Chris, is that I, you know, I'm, <laughs> I would need to see it in writing. I'm sorry, but that's, that's how I would have to think about it. But Barbara, aren't you suggesting what's currently already written? I'm sorry. I think I so aren't you suggesting what's currently already written? Yes, pretty much. Yeah. 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 And all I was adding was the, the it's at at the conclusion of the hearing the, the commissioners will make a decision that it because it's this at the conclusion of the hearing, we should have already made the decision. We can't right right. The decision the is made before three point eight one. Yeah. Comes into effect. So, so we're really just saying that's recorded. Somebody else is going to memorialize it in writing, just repeating the words that are on tape, and then send a copy to the participants, which is what's well. The, yeah, the author should send it to the county manager's designee, like we have in other places in here. It's it's not going to be your responsible your responsibility to serve it to all the different parties that should be staff right so a written ruling on the complaint uh and and i would say i would i would insert one sentence in the middle of this right now there's two sentences and the first sentence ends is section 2.07.020. And I would insert right after that the commission commissioner uh, or the commission, we can say, shall promptly forward the written decision to the county manager's designee. Decision spelled wrong. And then it's followed by the copy of the ruling shall be shall within a reasonable time. Um yeah, and I don't like that reasonable time thereafter. I I, <laughs> I would say I would skip that reasonable time thereafter. I'd say promptly and i would say the designee shall promptly serve the ruling
take the day off served. Is it? Oh. I did. I did. Yeah. Okay. I, it's hard to see because it's purple and black, but I think oh, now okay. if I did it right, it says the designee shall promptly serve the ruling by certified mail to the complainant and the respondent at addresses provided by such parties to the commission. Lovely. Sounds good. Okay. All right, then are we done with that paragraph? Are there two L's in ruling or am I looking at two? Oh, no, I was just typing fast. There we go. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, so the next part is just about the public participation, which we've covered in other in the other document. Yeah. And so the red that's in here just discusses the three minute rule that we established and put some additional um, requests on that so we can have a record of who's talking and what's being said. The uh, yeah, so the last part there about executive session, I think we need to change this based on some of the feedback from Chris. Uh, deliberations should be instead. So, what the Public Meetings Act says is that you can have executive session to receive and evaluate complaints or charges brought against a public officer or employee. So some somewhere there's got to be evaluation here. Um, what we do at county council meetings is we tell them that you know, they can discuss all over the place, but they can't deliberate. And what I think of deliberation as, because I'm not sure that it's defined, is explaining a particular vote. Position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you can, Why don't you we can, change deliberations right there? It says uh, uh, this discussion of condemned confidential matters or for evaluation of evidence presented. Yeah, that works. Yeah. That works for me. I think the rest of it, I don't have any objection to. All right, then um, the last section just says we can amend these, which <laughs> we're going to need to do. <laughs> um, so are we at a point where we can have a motion to approve these as we have them? Or do you guys feel like we need to get a clean copy out and have one more meeting about this. Um, I would really like us to have, if possible, a maximum of one more meeting about this. Um, I would be comfortable approving them as they are and um, then relying on our ability to amend these if we find that we've, we're up against a problem with them. But I'm also fine doing another meeting. Well, Adam, don't these have to go out to the unions or guilds or whatever they are? This one doesn't, I don't think. Uh, okay. And Chris or Kristen or somebody hopefully will correct me if I'm wrong, but these are internal just to us, whereas the other ones are more about how um, how the, the complaints are going to be handled 
in the county okay. offices. Well, with that in mind, I would move that they be approved as corrected. I would second that motion. Uh, Chris, any objection to us just approving these? Absolutely none. Okay. <laughs> Then uh, I, I also vote with Darcy and Barbara to approve them, and that is carried. So uh, we now have our business process. We now have our administrative procedures, which um, Kristen, I know we can count on to uh, clean them all up and get us out a copy of the final version. Yes, and yes, I will do that. All right. Excellent. So that's great, you guys. Excellent work. Um, thank you so much. Uh, the next thing on the agenda then is final suggestions for the business process. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything new on that from my perspective. Uh, with the understanding that we might need to make some changes to it after it goes through all the processes it has to uh, out of our hands. I think we just wanted to make sure uh, one more time that there wasn't going to be any additional changes so that we don't keep sending revised versions to all of our unions and guilds. So um, if there is no further changes, um, we will get this sent out again. I don't have anything else on it. I'm fine with that. Yeah, me too. Okay, so is it possible then at this meeting to talk about the status of the existing complaints and where we are on those in terms of the business process as we currently have it drafted? So, we haven't done anything because the business process has not been solidified yet. Um, okay. So, the final process is to have the unions and guilds um, provide feedback and be able to bargain those impacts. And then we can um, bring that back if there's anything that is recommended to change based on that, those discussions over the next couple of weeks. Um, and then at that point, we'll be handing, I would say, as soon as that is finalized by like bargaining is done, the uh, commission is uh, satisfied and adopts it, then we will initiate the 1st step of giving those complaints to our HR director and start the process. Okay. okay. So, then, with that in mind, it sounds like we should have another meeting um, scheduled for. Sometime between 2 weeks, I guess, and a month out to. Review the business process as it comes back from the bargaining process. Do I have that right? But we do have a meeting scheduled on February 20th, right? That's less than a month out. Oh, yeah. Yes, and that comes from, oh, a few meetings back, you all had set a quarterly meeting schedule. Um, and then we've been having special meetings up until then. But Tuesday, February 20th would be your a regular meeting date for the group. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. And I do have the hearing room here at the county um, available for those days. So I know that one can be hybrid if anyone from the public wants to come. Excellent. All or, right. or you all, you're invited to. <laughs> <laughs> How nice of you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, great. Okay, that works super then. So we can consider the final documents then. and. Um, Let's also have it as an agenda item for that meeting, an update from the county on um, the complaints that are outstanding, and um, hopefully it's sort of a timeline for when we can expect to uh, have uh, whatever happens next. That sound good? Yes, yeah, sounds good. All right. Um, anything else for the good of the order? No. Nope. Nothing from me. 
All right. Well, um, thanks again, you guys, for all your time and your commitment going through these documents and getting them to this point. Um, it was long and uh, interesting, and <laughs> I think we've come up with a really good start and that we'll just have minor changes as we go along to kind of make everything fit together once we really get started. So um, I'm glad to be at this point um, with all of you guys. I agree. It's excellent. Yeah. All right. Um, without anything else, then I guess we'll adjourn. All right. See, See you in February you all on the twentieth. All right. Thank you all. Everybody. Thanks. Kristen, I... Can you stay on for a minute, please? Yes, I can. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.